module is going to focus on team development. So what I want to do in this short video is introduce you to the Tuckman team development model. And this model, proposed by Bruce Tuckman in 1965, is based around four key stages of team development. And the names of each of these stages will probably give you a clue. Stage one is called the forming stage. Now at this stage, you basically haven't got a team. What you've got is a group of individuals collected together. So if you think about a situation where a new team is being put into place, then what needs to happen at the forming stage? Well, the first thing is the team needs to know why they've been brought together, what's their purpose, what are they trying to achieve, and then how will each of the individuals in that team contribute to the overall team purpose and function. So what tends to happen in the forming stage is that the individuals come together and then start gradually to ask the questions. So why are we here? What am I doing? How do I contribute? What's my role? Typically at this stage, some people will naturally want to step to the front and others will naturally want to sit back and watch and see and observe. And I'm quite sure we've all been in situations where when a new group of people have come together, there's been somebody who's piled in there, just because they shout the loudest doesn't necessarily mean they're automatically going to be the best or the most effective leader for the group. So the forming stage the management and the leadership of this stage is critical because the management is all about the people. It's about getting the individuals to understand that they will have a role to play. It's about making sure that people know each other, get to know each other and understand how they're going to work together. And the leadership is about setting the framework, it's about setting the structure. It's about saying this is why we're here, this is our team purpose, these are our values, this is our vision and this is what we're trying to achieve in the future. Stage 2 of Tuckman is called the storming stage. Now, the most important thing that Tuckman said was, firstly, a team has to go through the storming stage in terms of its development. Secondly, this inevitability is something that a leader should anticipate. I've worked with so many organisations where somebody has come in as a new leader to a team. I've been called in to, to give them some help and support. And they basically said to me, look, Leslie, I know I'm a good leader, I've done it before, it's worked in the past, and I've walked into absolute and utter chaos, so what am I doing wrong? And my answer is typically absolutely nothing at this stage other than the fact that you haven't anticipated that this is what you would face. It's inevitable that every team, at some stage, and in some cases on repeated occasions, will go through the storming phase. Now the name tells you what's happening, storming, exactly. People within the team, the individuals, have started to form alliances and cliques. They've started to test the boundaries. They've started to raise the questions. Who put you in charge? Who set that rule? Why should I listen to them? So as a consequence, what you get is literally the storm in the teacup. You get the start of conflict. You get people airing their own personal views and values and disagreeing, typically on a public basis. Now this brings with it particular challenges for both the leader and the manager. The management of the storming phase is management of conflict. It's management of the relationships and the people and an attempt to minimise the damage that any conflict can cause. The leadership, on the other hand, is about leading the team through that stage about recognising that they have to go through this to be able to come out the other side as a functioning unit. So the leadership is again about reinforcing this is why we're here, but reinforcing 
For the manager, these are the rules, these are the boundaries, these are the values. So it's about giving the manager a framework in which they can manage and move the team forward. Stage three is called the norming phase or the norming stage. So by this stage, the individuals in the team know their roles, they know their responsibilities, and they know the contribution they're expected to make to the team. The boundaries, the rules, the guidelines have all been agreed, so the processes and procedures sitting behind these are now in place. So at the norming stage, the manager is responsible for managing and ensuring that the people, the tasks, the activities, the functions of the team are carried out efficiently and effectively for ensuring that all the resources that are required to allow the team to function are in place. The leader, on the other hand, will at this stage be looking to the next part of their development, looking to the performance of the team, looking at how the team can be moved on, and looking also at factors that could influence whether they're external or internal that may have an effect on the team, both positive and negative, in the future. Stage four of Tuckman's model is called the performing stage. And this is the stage at which the actual identity of the team itself is stronger than any of the individuals in the team. So a classic example of this is to think of something like Manchester United. Manchester United has seen David Beckham come and go and it's seen other high profile talented individuals come into the environment and then leave it but the team itself has still continued to function. So the performing stage which is where many teams aspire to be is where the team has actually performed at a particular level consistently and continues to do so regardless of changes in the dynamics of the team. What Tuckman said, apart from the fact that every team has to go through the storming phase, was that there are a whole range of factors that can influence the way a team functions and as a consequence a team can move across and between the phases with great rapidity. So this explains why it's perfectly possible for a team to be functioning well at 5pm on a Friday and then on a Monday morning at 9am troubles brewing. So what are the factors that are going to influence a team and the stage that a team is currently operating in? Well typically it's related to change. If a key member of the team leaves, if a new member of staff joins the team, if something affects the team such as an external factor such as a financial limitation or constraint um, or a new initiative being imposed or a change in legislation. So anything that can actually affect or upset the dynamics of a team can have the impact that literally, like that, a team can go from the norming and revert to the storming phase. So for the manager, at any stage in the development, the focus is on managing the people, the resources, the tasks and the activities. But for the leader, it's critical to ensure that the leader is setting the direction, is putting in place the framework, and is continuing to scan the horizon for any of those influences that could have an impact and an effect on the team and the stage in which it's functioning at any given time. So Tuckman's model. There are additional stages that have been introduced uh, subsequent to Tuckman's original model, and you'll find a little bit of information in your document which you're going to download now.